Black Alpha Network, home of Black Excellence. Wheelchairs on Washington, Dinosaurs, Jurassic Park, Out of Touch, Irrelevant, a bunch of no motherfucking bodies, a bunch of wasted time, a bunch of wasted space from a bunch of wasted people. And we're going to break all that down right now on the Black Alpha Network, because this shit is no filters, straight to the point, only for the real, real grassroots, foundational black Americans and certified black society, because there's only one way to go, and that's all the way to fuck in. So let's get it. All right, everybody, much respect, salute, 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 catch these vibes, coming from me, Black Alpha 6, one love from the Black Alpha Network, I gotta send a shout out to all my brothers, sisters, kings, queens, the goddess, and the gods, I love everybody in the B1 family, I love all my foundational black Americans, and everybody who's representing that real, independent, grassroots, keep doing your motherfucking thing, keep motherfucking shining on them and do not stop don't compromise and keep giving them that good work facts oh and hit that subscribe button by the way bang them notifications we on fire right now and we build it but right now we're gonna put all that on the table we're gonna set that right here much love and respect but we're gonna do what we do best over here we're gonna expose some motherfuckers oh yes damn right all the way live fuck they feelings for life if you give a fuck about a Sambo or a Coons feelings, then your ass ain't never gonna go nowhere. You gonna be stuck. And we ain't got that kind of time to sit still because we getting straight to the empowerment and we getting straight to the money. If you ain't riding that wave with us, then we can't deal with you. If you ain't on that liberation, getting straight to it, we can't ride with you. Anybody who's talking something other than true black grassroots empowerment, we don't see you, you don't exist to us. And you cannot exist in our presence, that's why we gotta run you off the block. And that's what's going on with these wheelchair on Washington motherfuckers. I'm talking about the Messy Jesse Jacksons, the Al Sharptons, the Tamika Cadillac Mallory's, the Good Troubles, the Black Lives Matter, all the motherfuckers. Every last one of them. These are the people that want to come around and pollute and dilute anything that we come up with. They want to steal our terms. They want to shift our energy to other groups. They want to play these mind games on people that they can get away with that shit. But they can't get away with that shit when it comes to us. Because they're counterfeits. We certified. Go back and listen to my video about the counterfeit Negro and you'll see exactly what it is. It needs no explanation because it explains itself. There's only two types of black people. You got certified blacks, which are us B ones. And then you got the counterfeit Negro. They're not the same. We are not the same and they'll never be. Only thing we share with these motherfuckers is color. That's it. And they use that color to get off a bunch of bullshit and they use that color to cape for other groups. But we ain't having that. We ain't having that at all. See, we're real. Everything we represent is solid. We can walk up and down these streets every day and people know us. We can walk up and down these streets every single day and people salute us. They show love. They don't have that. And that shit drives them insane. That's why they can't stand us. That's why they be hating. That's why they be drinking on that goddamn haterade. They got a whole goddamn cup full of haterade when it comes to certified black society. When it comes to B1s. Because we're everything they wish they were. And we represent everything they can't be. Not in their life, not if they try. See, this black skin that we have is power. Everywhere we go, people feel our presence. They don't have that. When they walk in the room, they immediately start bowing down and kissing people's feet. They gotta go around and kiss ass to get where they gotta go. They are scared, we not. We strong, they soft, we real, they fake. You ever met a motherfucker who's just fake? There ain't too many other words you can come up with. They just a fake motherfucker, a fraud. Ain't nothing about them real. I'm talking about the way they walk, the way they talk, their movements, their fucking mannerisms, the look on their goddamn face, everything about them is fake. They don't believe the shit that they say. <laughs> you ever meet a motherfucker when they speak and they don't look like they believe themselves? That is the counterfeit. That is the wheelchair on Washington. That is the good trouble crowd. They don't believe that shit. They don't believe that shit for one goddamn second. They know better than we know that they ain't shit. <laughs> and they just bad actors. And they try to perpetrate like they us. Every single thing they do, I'm talking about in terms of ideology, approach, belief, goes nowhere. Nowhere. All they do is lose. I mean, their whole agenda is just filled with fucking losses. They ain't accomplished one thing. They done marched for 60 years and ain't moved one inch. 
Only thing marching has ever done for them is give them leg cramps. That's it. We can go right now and go get our money. We can go put our money together. And you see it. Hey, fuck that. I don't have to give an example. We can look at it right motherfucking now. Look at everything that's going on in the grassroots black community where black people are out here getting real businesses going. You got teenagers out here selling t-shirts. I just talked to some young folks who got a little business popping off. Salute to them if you're listening. Black folks is out here getting real money, starting real businesses on a real grassroots level. And these motherfuckers is still marching on Washington. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. It's to the point where they're being lapped by teenagers. You got old motherfuckers, old Jim Crow era march with Martin Megas Elvis ass counterfeit Negroes out here being lapped by preteens. Yes, I said it. They're out here literally being financially and tangibly lapped by some goddamn teenagers. I know kids who are 15, 16 years old who have more of an understanding, a knowledge, and a wherewithal on how to build black economics, on how to pile our money and create generational wealth to pass down to the youth. And they are the youth. But yet you got these motherfuckers marching on Washington, pulling up in goddamn wheelchairs and goddamn crutches and walkers, talking about some. I marched with Martin in 65 and cried and lied. They died in Selma, Elma, Megas, Elvis. <laughs> and y'all asses look like goddamn fools. And it's a shame. And we're going to break down every single aspect of how we differ from them. We all know that they on some undercover agent decoy shit. So that doesn't need to be completely discussed, but we're going to touch up on it because that's what we do. Race receipts. But we're going to talk about how their ideology ain't never went nowhere. It ain't never got no motherfucking results. How they just really running in place. If you ever seen the motherfucking treadmill, if you ever in your life have seen the treadmill, then you done seen a black Democrat civil rights Negro because what they got in common, the treadmill and them, they both got you running in place and ain't going no goddamn where. Checkmate. Why this era right here is out here building mobilizing, strategizing, creating generational wealth, really getting on one page and making shit happen, creating those tangibles that them motherfuckers never taught us, creating them tangibles that them motherfuckers never even spoke about. And that's why they don't like us and we don't like them motherfuckers either because we real and they fake. We out here really getting it and we're making do with shit that they never ever even thought of. While we're out here talking about building real strong black communities, they was out here marching on Washington. While we out here talking about building real strong economic foundations, they talking about marching on Washington. We building real platforms. We're passing down wealth, intelligence, and real certified energy. What were they trying to pass down? They was passing down ass kissing, boot licking, and going on Washington. <laughs> we ain't having that shit no more. These are two groups that are the polar opposites. We represent the real side. They represent the irrelevant, non-existent nobodies. And what's the best way to address a nobody? You walk right around their ass, just like that bullshit ass march they just had, and they got about 17 people to show up. <laughs> Did y'all even know that shit was happening? I didn't even know that shit was happening. Only reason I even knew that shit went on is because I just happened to walk by the television and CNN was trying to cover it. And they covered that shit for about three minutes and got right to the goddamn dog show. <laughs> went to a whole nother fucking story. That was the most irrelevant fucking march anniversary, whatever the fuck you want to call it, I've ever seen. They said that shit was March on Washington. I say it's wheelchairs on Washington. Because the motherfuckers who were there, when they first came, they were able to walk. And then they slowly got older and then got their feet turned into goddamn crutches. The crutches turned into a goddamn walker. The walker turned into a goddamn wheelchair. And the only thing older than their motherfucking wheelchair is their ideas. Is their old, outdated ass ideas. They still have plantation ideas. And here's the thing about it. None of them have ever worked. They literally have the worst fucking track record ever. How many times do you lose before you realize you need to change your fucking plans? They still running around here with plans that ain't ever worked, let alone their plans is 997 fucking years old. Their plans are 997 years old that ain't ever motherfucking worked. If you're going to have an old plan, let it be a plan that's actually worked, where you can point to some shit and got real motherfucking evidence that it actually succeeded. These motherfuckers have never succeeded. They literally are running in fucking place. They on the treadmill. They on a motherfucking treadmill. If you're still walking around here with a good trouble idea, matter of fact, let me say this. If you're still saying the fucking word good trouble, then we all know you're a fucking agent. You can't even separate the two. Good trouble means I'm a fucking agent. They had a fucking good trouble parade or march or whatever the fuck they called it. Really? In 20 motherfucking 21, I don't, matter of fact, I don't give a fuck in 2000 and anything. 21, 22, 25, 29. What the fuck are you still having a good trouble march for? What the fuck is all that about? 
Good Trouble didn't work in the goddamn 60s. <laughs> so how the fuck you think it's gonna skip over the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2010s, the 2020s, and now it's gonna work? You know what, I used to say these motherfuckers was fake. I used to say, I was, matter of fact, I, I might have to take that back. Y'all heard me say these motherfuckers is fake and phony and frauds. That's just a part of them. Really, I think these motherfuckers is delusional. That's really what it is. Sometimes you can have so much slave activity going on in your brain. You can be so slavified. You can be so consumed with slaveness that it makes you fucking delusional. It makes you go crazy. It's like when a motherfucker drinks salt water and they start seeing mirages and shit running into walls. I, I think that's what's happening to them. I think being fake is the least of their goddamn problems. The major part of their problem is that they fucking delusional. Is that they're doing shit over and over and over and over and the shit keeps failing over and over and over and over and they think that shit gonna work tomorrow. This shit ain't never worked before. You ain't got no evidence of it ever working. You can't point to one victory or one game, but you say, hey, tomorrow at seven, that shit gonna work. Listen, what do they say? They say, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So when we say these folks is delusional, these folks are delusional. Receipts. I mean, that, that's what it is. Yeah, I, I, I think these motherfuckers is, uh, they got a, what they say, post-traumatic slave disorder? I think they got current traumatic slave disorder. I think their minds is all fucked up. They like scrambled eggs and shit. This your brain on drugs, this your brain on good trouble. <laughs> I'd rather have the motherfucking drugs. Fuck it, shit. <laughs> At least when a motherfucker get high, he come back down. These motherfuckers get high, head in the clouds, and don't never come back around. What the fuck? If your ass is still doing some shit from 1962 that ain't ever worked, your ass is still doing that, uh, you might want to start doing some fucking drugs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll start in this shit. I mean, this motherfucker shows up at this event. And by the way, like I said, who even knew about this event? This was the most pathetic shit in the world. This shit looked like a motherfucking bingo hall. This shit looked like where all the popular kids is out doing other things and then the motherfucking low budget nobody's over there fucking playing bingo or whatever the fuck. That's what that shit looked like. They couldn't fill up a motherfucking pizzeria. There was just a bunch of people. Half the people there weren't even black. Okay, because it's really a democratic front. It's really a democratic convention. It's really a bunch of Democrats who are using the black struggle, bringing in these good trouble agents to push democratic policies off on black folks and evoke the emotions of Martin Luther King and Megas Elvers and Rosa Parks. Once again, nothing up to that. Nothing up to that. But what they do not understand, and this shows you how irrelevant they are and how out of touch. And this is slap in the face with reality. They don't even know that this era of black people today, they don't get moved off Martin Luther King quotes. We don't harp off a goddamn Rosa Parks sitting in the back of the bus. We don't hear those stories no more and that shit makes us walk off a fucking cliff blindly. Okay, you can't put the Martin Luther King battery pack in our backs anymore and then go get us to do dumb shit. You can go do that with the dinosaurs. You can go do that with them. But black folks today are more in touch with people like Dr. Claw. Matter of fact, I go as far to challenge you. I think more black people today know more about Dr. Umar Johnson, Tariq Nasheed, Dr. Claude Anderson, our sister Queen Vicki Dillard, Jason Black from the Black Authority, Professor Black, Judge Joe Brown. These are the names and the faces that resonate more with this era. We salute Martin Luther King and them, but we look at that shit more from the aspect of that's what they did then. That was Martin Luther King. But as you had Martin, we understand that you had a lot of people in the 60s that didn't even have his ideology. And a lot of us relate to other people like the Panthers and so on and so forth. So we look at Martin Luther King and Megas Elvers and all them. That's them. That's their era. Don't mean we're going to go do it today. Don't mean we're going to have a motherfucking battery pack in our back and we're going to have reenactments of him. He's not our motherfucking savior. He's not somebody that we're going to go after and say, Martin Luther King, what would he do? Hell no. We move this shit the way we move it. That was his era. He did his shit. We're going to do ours. You know what I mean? And we're going to relate to people nowadays who are real, in the mist, in the action, ten toes down, out the mud. That's where we're going to get it. So this little notion that you're going to use Martin Luther King quotes as a weapon against black people. Because remember this. You got two types of things. You have Martin Luther King, who's a man. And then you have token Luther King. White and Luther King. And that's their version. And that version is only created so it can steer black folks into control black folks. And the good trouble, those are the agents who facilitate it. Problem with them is we don't give a fuck about them and we ain't listening. And that really hurts their feelings. That's why every weekend Roland Martin is upset. I, 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 I told that today, one day, y'all don't listen now. He's, he's mad. He's mad because they don't have that same control they thought they did. 
back a couple decades ago, that March on Washington shit and all their fucking anniversaries, they used to draw thousands of people. Now it's only drawing hundreds. And every year, it became less and less and less relevant. It went from front page, middle page, back page to right off the news. They have speakers and organizations no one's ever heard of. They play music nobody's fucking into. The goddamn podiums look raggedy. They got fucking trash all over the fucking ground. It was poorly put together, dingy. I mean, the fucking Bootsy Bash had a bigger budget. <laughs> this shit was dirty as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they didn't have one talking point, one clear message. Everybody came up on stage and said something different. Uh, I mean, it made no goddamn sense. Al Sharpton showed up and he literally started telling the story about people writing a fucking essay about their house pets. <laughs> People are looking at him like, what the fuck? Matter of fact, hey, this is a Black Alpha Network. We get down. Y'all know I got receipts. Oh, I ain't just gonna tell you about it and just make you think what happened. No, 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 let's play this shit. Let's listen to it for ourselves. Literally, Al Sharpton gets on there and starts talking about students writing essays about their pets. <laughs> Not to mention his goddamn hair plugs looked like they was about to jump off his head into the crowd. His hair plugs was about to go stage diving. <laughs> Let's listen to it all for ourselves. Let's hear it. That there was this class that was an English class. And there was this young student that was an expert student, an honor student. And they got to the end of the semester. And the teacher said, I have one more assignment. I want everybody to write an essay of their pet at home. The honor student kind of shrugged his shoulders. That was easy for him. They went home over the weekend. He sat out and worked out his prose and his poetry. They came in Monday morning, put the papers down on the teacher's desk. She's going to grade them at lunchtime and give them their papers back at the end of the day. God damn, Al. <laughs> People who like you can't even defend you. <laughs> What the fuck was that? That's the slave babble we talking about. That's the fucking slave babble at this goddamn wheelchairs on Washington March. This is the shit they're doing. That right there, that is not a motherfucking joke. This is the ranting and the all fucking cold, nonsense, no point, irrelevant shit that was going on at this goddamn march. This is why it was irrelevant. This is why nobody knows about it. That's why the average black person in the streets was sitting there watching TV and flipping right over that shit. Hey, if that's what you want, Al, god damn, you need to start eating again. Man, bro, get fat again. Let alone he out here looking like a damn poodle with a pit bull head <laughs> with hair plugs on top, putting the perm back in. <laughs> Maybe you'll be able to put a fucking sentence together. And if you think that was bad, shit, he wasn't even the worst one. Listen to this guy. We cannot, as Democrats, control the House, the Senate, and the presidency and not deliver on the things that the people who sent us there to do. Yeah. When you control the House and the presidency or the Senate and the presidency, there's an expectation. But when you control the House, the Senate, and the presidency, there's an obligation. We have an obligation to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And here's why. We have a right and an obligation to do it because Dr. King marched so that we might have these voting rights. Toronto Goodman and Cheney gave their lives so that we could have these voting rights. Mecca Edwards was murdered on his front porch so that we could have these voting rights. We have a duty to those who have shed blood on the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Listen to that guy. That guy is having his own personal reenactment of the civil rights air for his own little brownie points on the inside. He's trying to relive a sit-in, relive a march, because that's all they do. And if you don't play along, they'll get mad. And notice how he switched the talking points. Notice how he changed it up. He said all this black stuff, blackity, blackity, black. And then he starts sliding in, go vote, Democrat, go vote, Democrat. And he's sitting there talking the same shit. And that's what they all do, because this was really a black Democratic convention. You see, Democoons, they're not really Democrats. Black folks cannot belong to the Democratic Republican Party, okay? That's just what it is. Those parties are exclusive for the dominant society. They only allow black folks to believe that they're a part of it so they can hustle them and con them and get numbers. That's it, okay? It's like the motherfucker who allows somebody to hang out because they got the green. Allow a motherfucker to hang out because they give you a free ride every now and then. We all know the motherfucker who got the car and people pretend to be down with them 
and they only come around when they can get something from you. That's all it is. They only come around black folks and they only allow black folks to think that they're a part of these organizations when in reality, they're just pawns. That's all they are, that's all they've ever been. And knowing that a lot of these black folks wants to be accepted by Massa. I got to stand next to Massa in the rain and go vote for him. The whole I gotta vote for Master, love Master, love Master more than thyself. They know black folks suffer from this and all they do is exploit it. And this was the Democratic Black Convention. The real Democratic Convention happened last year. And if you ever notice that crowd, that crowd's got all the Democrats who are W's. These March on Washington's got all the Democrats who are black people. And theirs is outside, <laughs> sometimes in the rain on Martin Luther King uh, birthday, or Martin Luther King anniversary day, or Martin Luther King had a goddamn turkey sandwich day. Whatever they can do, that's gonna evoke emotion. That's what it is. So you got basically black folks doing what a lot of black folks did during slavery. Yes, once again, it's the plantation cycle. It's as supremacy turns. The same way back in slavery, black folks would be in the plantation looking up at the big old house and see master and them having drinks and walking around and having a little party. And then they would go and they would have cosplay of it and they would have their own little plantation party where they would mimic and replicate what slave master's family was doing. This is the same thing that the March on Washington is. They sit back and they see all these W Democrat conventions that they're not allowed to come to, that if they do come, they gotta serve the drinks okay and check people at the door they see the way the w's have their real conventions inside with suits on and dresses and they drink the best champagne and the best wine and they laugh and they discuss things and then they go have their replicated slave version of it only they do it outside for Martin Luther king and voter rights <laughs> that's all it is and this is what this guy was talking about and this is what they're all talking about this has nothing to do with black people they only use black folks as a talking point so they can evoke emotion so they can go get them votes. It all goes back to what benefits the W. It could be black pain, black suffering, black trauma, but it's all gotta go back to the dominant society's wealth, the dominant society's benefits, and the dominant society's dominance. That's it, that's what it's all about. I mean, all they are is losers. I mean, just to be honest with you, they're failures. They've been going around, failing, messing up, screwing up every goddamn thing they touch. They got no respect from black people. Real black folks don't remember them. All these people you see at this March on Washington, you won't even remember them. History will not remember any of these people. None, they'll just be a flyby. You know what I'm saying? You got black folks who were certified, who were just regular people who are remembered. You can go to local areas. You can go to places in California. You can go to places in New York. You can go to motherfucking places in Ohio, Indiana, and you got black folks who are local legends who carry more respect and more weight. You got rappers that carry more respect and more weight than these motherfuckers. These are supposed to be activists and leaders, never heard of them. These are supposed to be activists and leaders, won't be remembered, no one even knows them. If you took the average young black person and you showed them a picture of Jesse Jackson, they wouldn't even know who the fuck he is. They wouldn't even know who the fuck he is at all. None, no way. If you showed them a picture of Al Sharpton, fuck who, they wouldn't know what the fuck he is. <laughs> Tamika Mallory, no, they, who is she? You wouldn't even know what she is. She's an I want to be a Karen. That's all she is. She's an I want to be a Karen. She would sell her soul to be a Karen. That's what she is. And check out my video, Black Activist. We've already exposed her. Like she's already been exposed. We washed that one up, nothing. Everything about her is fraudulent. She's a nobody, no one knows her. Hell, I didn't even know who the fuck she was. Never seen them before in my life. These motherfuckers are propped up and still unknown. God damn. These is like the rappers that got a, a million dollar motherfucking contract with a major label, but yet the underground rapper is more known than them. That's sad, that's sad, because they live a sad existence. They live a sad life. These are not activists, these are chumps. We gotta separate the champs from the chumps, you know what I'm saying? The victors from the victims. Y'all know what side they on. We know what side we on. That's why we put in work and we make real change. We don't go steal their words. We ain't out here talking about some, let's go march, y'all. We not saying that, that's what they say. They gotta come take our terms, like tangibles, which they never said until we did, like reparations, which they never said until we did. All they do is they watch our moves. They study and they watch, and then they come take our shit. So who's the winner here? Who's the winner? What Tupac say? You tell me who won. I see them, they run. Who's taking whose words? Who's taking whose terminology? The motherfucker who gotta come and take your shit is a motherfucker who wanna be just like you. But they know they don't have the fortitude, they ain't got the style, they ain't got the soul to be us. They can't carry us, trying to carry our motherfucking weight, and they'll fold. 
It's too strong. We do it with natural grace. We do it natural. They can't. That's why we call them a counterfeit. Counterfeit is what? It ain't natural. It ain't real. It's wrong. That's how they are. They are here stealing our words and our terminologies because they can't come up with none because they still doing shit that was created in 1955. We coming up with new ideas every single day. This grassroots black certified era comes up with new strategies every single day and are getting things done. Getting things done. I'm talking about black folks out here really, really building schools, building museums, building small businesses, getting together groups, getting together economics. We don't have to break it all and fuck down. We know it because we live in it. They don't know it, but we do because we created it. We created all this. What have they created? Point to me one thing that they've ever created, that they've ever built. They ain't built nothing. You got black folks back from the 30s and the 40s, the 20s. I'm talking about black folks way, way, way back in the day. Black Wall Street. They built something. We building something. Who's in between? Who's in between that? Who's in between the early 1900s and who's in between the early 2000s? It's the civil rights Negroes. We know that they built something back in the early 1900s and we know that we building things now. What is the civil rights Negro ever built? What, a, a monument of Martin Luther King? A, a, a monument of Selma? Think about it. Really put your mind on that. The Black Wall Street anniversary just passed and people were studying it very, very major. That was something that you can point to that was tangible, that was real black empowerment. We have a lot of things that are black empowerment today. The people who are in between those eras are the people who didn't do shit, nothing. All the real ones out there, no one ever talks about it. You don't talk about the real people from that era. You only uplift the pick up your pants, pay child support, good trouble people. But then it's sad that we gotta go way back to the 1940s, the 1930s and the 1920s and celebrate the things that they created. But when you start getting into the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, it all went away. What's the denominator? What's the denominator? I'll tell you what it is. It's good trouble. It's I bled at Selma. It's I had a dream that one day Massa would put his belt away. <laughs> no accomplishments. None. None at all. None. The people who were about it from that era, I salute them. But let's be real. The people who have been propped up don't mean nothing. And they're still out here trying to dictate to folks that they don't even know nothing about. How the fuck you trying to dictate to a generation three ahead of you? What you know? What you know about what's going on in the world? That's why young folks don't respect them and they have no, no, no clout in our community. There's a whole group of new people, black intellectuals, black pillars, black minds, black strategists that people today relate to. So them motherfuckers walking around here still thinking someone gives a damn about Selma. You out your motherfucking mind. You ever see somebody who's so out of touch, they don't know they out of touch? That's how they are. Al Sharpton think he hold weight. You hold no weight. Jesse Jackson hold no weight. Tamika Mallory holds no weight. All she is is the new version of them. And just like the old version of them, they're irrelevant, including her. You understand? This is why we can't point to anything they've ever done. They haven't moved the needle one inch. They haven't took one step forward. All they've been doing is marching in place. Old, outdated, dusty, raggedy ass ideologies. All they goddamn moves and strategies is so fucking outdated, it's pathetic. I mean, and what's the deal with the goddamn marching? Really? Marching is their plan for everything. Marching is their strategy for every goddamn problem. They cut because they have none. They have none. They're not intelligent. They're failures. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. They're failures. They have no strategies. They don't have any economic strategies that are in cohesion with economics. They don't have no education strategies that are in cohesion with education. They don't have any community strategies that are in cohesion with the community. Marching is their answer to every damn thing. Every fucking thing. If it starts raining outside, they say, we don't need an umbrella. Let's go to Washington to go march. <laughs> If it gets cold outside or there's a goddamn hurricane, they say, oh, let's go to Washington and march. They marched in Washington after Hurricane Katrina. What the fuck does Washington got to do with Hurricane Katrina? It was in goddamn Louisiana. This is what the fuck they do. A race soldier harms a black kid in St. Louis. They want to go to Washington and go march. A black man gets laid off in goddamn Cleveland. They want to go to Washington and go march. They don't even go to the spot where the damn crime happened. And then they still want to go get on the bus. <laughs> the black folks, I ain't playing. Feel me, this is how crazy they are, straight up and down. They're so out of touch, they're so stuck in 1955, they don't even understand that we got planes. You can go get a plane ticket and go to Washington. You can get in a goddamn car and go to Washington. Let alone you wanna go to goddamn Washington so fucking bad and go march, but at least go do the shit with modern transportation. Get a goddamn Uber. These motherfuckers still wanna go get on a bus like it's the bus boycott. <laughs> they still think Martin Luther King gonna walk through the fucking door. This is how out of touch they are. They still want to lock arms, get on the bus, and go sing Negro spirituals. We be like, Jesse Jackson, you, you can go get on a plane. No, we just gonna go get on the bus now. John Lewis, no. Hey, come on, I'll give you a ride. No, we got a bus for all that now. <laughs> 
This is how motherfucking irrelevant they are. So when we say that they're nobodies and they hold no weight in the black community, I mean that shit. Say what I said. And it's not just my words, it's what they've shown. The biggest motherfucking thing is when someone shows that they self. Hold on, somebody hit me up. Who the fuck is this? Fuck them. Anyway, as I was saying, black alpha time. These motherfuckers is so out of touch and so irrelevant that they don't even know it. And it's just us right now, we just calling what it is. We didn't make it this way. All we do is call it out because that's what we do over here. I mean, they're out here having an anniversary of the anniversary of the anniversary of some shit that happened 50 fucking years ago. Come on, let's keep this shit above. Go get on the internet right now and go type in um, March on Washington. You'll see the goddamn the 55th anniversary. You'll see the 54th anniversary, the 53rd anniversary. These motherfuckers are celebrating every day like it's a goddamn wedding anniversary. They don't even give it a break. They don't even say we're going to take a year off, a year off. No, these motherfuckers every year having a goddamn March on Washington anniversary. And you wonder why you ain't going no goddamn way. I got clips of Tupac in 1991 talking about how the fuck are we still marching? He said that 91 and he's been gone for 20 years and they still just marched last week. <laughs> this is a race receipt. God damn, you can't make this shit up. There ain't no limit to counterfeit. None, none at all. As a matter of fact, listen, you're gonna hear the same anniversary shit over and over and over. The 54th, the 55th, the 58th annual celebration. The same routine that I told you that they just do where they run in place and they do a bunch of nothings. Listen to these motherfuckers every year celebrating the same shit, marching, but ain't going nowhere. Receipts. Today, thousands of people gathered in Washington, D.C. and dozens of other cities demanding legal protections for voting rights. It comes 58 years, 58 years, 58 years after the historic March on Washington. This morning's March on Washington, honoring the 57th anniversary, 57th anniversary, 57th anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Tonight, the nation honors, celebrates, and remembers the March on Washington 50 years later, 50 years later, 50 years later. Turn around, turn around. century later, people are still marching. What's well, the 55th anniversary, 55th anniversary, 55th anniversary, 55th anniversary of the March on Washington, but more important that this is Martin Luther King County. <laughs> I told y'all, they be living this shit every year and they ain't going no goddamn way. <laughs> Kids is going around them. And the funny thing is, is that now they talking about voter rights. That's the reason why they're out there, right? But just a year ago, you told me that voting was the solution. You told me all we got to do is go vote. Anybody but Trump. Go vote Biden Harris. Well, if Biden and Harris were your masters and you told us how they was going to save the day and they was going to save black folks and how he did so much for black people, how come you in Washington still asking why you got to march? I thought voting was a solution. That's what you told us last year. They told us last year, if you vote, everything gets solved. You got to go vote. But it's funny that you just voted, but you still out in Washington, D.C. begging. That ain't how it work. That ain't how it work. You supposed to vote and then get what you voted for in return. You vote and you still got to march on top of it. Ain't nobody else out there still marching. They vote. Some of them didn't even vote. And they got tangibles. They got laws. They didn't have to go march every year. They didn't have to go to have a wheelchairs march on Washington. But they got tangibles. Every other group is out there getting laws and benefits and didn't have to march once. Black folks is out here caping, voting, standing in line, saying we're going to save the day with Joe Biden. And they still got to march and say, help us. So they were saying, help us in the damn voting box. And now they're saying, help us on Washington. Sound like you ain't gonna get that help. It sound like all that vote and save the day was a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, because one year ago, you said voting was good. It would save the day and it'll solve everything. But you still marching? Why the hell are you still marching then? You should have just voted and got the laws that you voted for. Sound like you still gotta go beg. And then you can't even come to the inside. You still on the outside. The Democratic Party runs every form of the government. They have the House, the Senate, the White House, black folks voted for them at 90 fucking percent, and you still ain't getting nothing done. Think about it. They own every single branch. Black folks voted in every single state, and you still got to go march and beg? That's what we call slavery, and you a counterfeit. What kind of group voted so much and still got to go beg? What kind of group voted so heavy and still got to go beg? What kind of group voted at the highest rates 
and still got to go beg the people, the people with the power. The Democrats have all the power that you need to get laws done. They wrote all the laws for everybody else. The Democrats own every single branch. They got the powers to make things happen right now. And you voted for them. And you still got to beg? What kind of group got to vote for a motherfucker at that rate and still say we got to go march and ask them? That sounds like your vote didn't mean shit. So when we said no tangibles, no vote, we were right. When we said no reparations, no vote, we were right. When we said no laws, no benefits, no resources, cancel it. We were right. And they was wrong. But then again, that's pretty much what it always is. Certifies on top, counterfeits don't exist, but we're going to keep on holding it down that way. You already know. And they get all these things accomplished off the back of black suffering, off the back of black slaves, off the back of Martin Luther King, Megas Elvers, Rosa Parks, civil rights era. They use all of the blood, sweat, and tears that black people have dealt with, and then they funnel all that energy into voting Democrats, and then the Democrats funnel all that energy into serving every other group except black people. This is why whenever you watch a March on Washington, you can look at what they're saying and then you can literally get on the Democratic website and look at their mission statement and look at their policies and you can draw a direct line. This ain't independent black folks. This isn't grassroots black people speaking real terminology and having real black first policies that the average black person out here in these streets represents. No, these are black people who are spewing democratic talking points and regurgitating democratic policies. That's why everything they say, you can go get on the democratic website and see it. Everything they speak of is a democratic talking point. Everything they speak of is a democratic bill. And then now they try to flip it up and be like, we're trying to call the Democrats to task. You're not calling the Democrats to task. You ain't calling them to task because you just told everybody you vote blue no matter who. One minute they sitting here talking about some vote blue no matter who. We got to vote Democrat, go out and vote. And then the next minute they say we got to hold these people accountable. You can't hold them accountable. How you going to hold somebody accountable when you said you're going to vote for them no matter what? What you're really doing is you're trying to save face and you're trying to look tough and you're trying to be a tough guy. You're trying to be a CWA, a coon with an attitude. But in actuality, it is what everybody on this whole damn planet knows. You are a pawn of the Democratic Party. You are property of the Democratic Party. You are a puppet of the Democratic Party. And you have a Democrat battery placed in your back. Save us all the tough guy stuff. Save us all that. We gonna call them the task and y'all need to help us out. No, no, no. The Democrats control every single aspect of Washington. And you still out front begging them. <laughs> you gotta go beg for these folks to go do something. And they got all the control. Think about it. They're sitting here talking about how the Republicans is doing it bad because they're okay with racism if they can pass it off on Republicans, okay? See, they live in this world where there's always gotta be a hero and a villain with the W society, okay? There's always gotta be a good one and a bad one. The good one is always gonna stand for us. He'll go against his own family. He'll fight his own mama and his own daddy and his own cousin and his own grandma and he's gonna do it on behalf of black people. <laughs> I know, I know, I got it, okay. Yeah, there's always a good one versus the bad one, and the good ones are always gonna fight for us. You can't point to anything that the good ones have ever done other than words, other than play stupid and be like, I can't stop the bad ones, and that's all it is. This myth that the Democrats are the good ones and the Republicans are the bad ones, as if one of them is racist and the other's not, bullshit. Remember, they both come from the same household. They both come from the same area, and they was both sitting at that same dinner table with their same parents. Okay, all right, because remember, they may disagree on a lot of things from education to economics, but the one thing that historically they've always agreed on is anti-black racism. Anti-black racism is the one thing that connects the world. It's the one thing the world has in common. This is why you can go to any damn country and they practice it. You name me anything else where everybody practices things the same. You know, they don't practice spirituality the same. You can go to one place and they'll be spiritual and believe in this and somebody else will believe in that. They don't have the same economic systems. One person has communism. The other person has socialism. One person has capitalism. They don't all agree on education the same. Some people have education that's free. Some people have education that costs money. Some folks don't even have a middle school or an elementary school. Some people don't have college. Some people have college but don't have post-grad. But if you go to every single one of these countries, the one thing they all have is anti-black racism and black people being at the bottom. So when you go to these little marches out here and they're basically trying to tell us these are the good ones that we're going to vote for no matter who. And then we're going to come back here later and complain. See, they make no sense. 
it's all backwards. It's ass backwards. Because one minute, just a year ago, they was out here talking about Democrat Party, Roland Martin's crying. They talking about some how many more times? How much fried chicken gon' fry? <laughs> they sitting there crying, talking about we voted, and now they're talking about voter rights. It's funny to me. It's very, very motherfucking funny. One year ago, it was vote blue no matter who, which means you got the ability to vote. One year ago, it was vote for Biden, vote for Harris, which means we got the ability to vote. One year ago, it was, y'all better go out there and go vote. Your ancestors died for the right to vote. And now all of a sudden it's, we got to fight for our right to vote. I, I thought we could vote. You just told me for the last two years that we could vote, 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 vote. Now you're saying how we can't vote. Hmm. It just so happens to be that black folks are out here talking about voter rights the same time the Democratic Party is trying to get illegals to vote. So is it safe to say, and we know it is, certifies, is it safe to motherfucking say that this ain't got shit to do with black people being able to vote? Because let's cut this shit. Black people got the right to vote. When the fuck did black people not have the right to vote? They keep talking about all these laws are being passed that stop us from voting and all that. Where? What? What law? Hmm? Is it to stop black people from voting? Or is it to stop non-citizens from voting? Is it to stop black foundational Americans from voting? Or is it to stop foreigners who come to this country from voting? Yeah, and they do what they always do. They take something that does not even apply to us. They throw some Martin Luther King on you. They throw some Rosa Parks on you. They sprinkle a little slavery. They go get all the Al Sharpins and the Tamika Mallory's of the world so they can come tell us how it's our issue and then we'll be in the streets fighting for it and as soon as we get some shit passed then the other group slides in this ain't about black people voting this is about illegals voting and as soon as you go out there and you think you're going to get something passed you're going to end up getting something passed for illegals to vote guarantee it when this law ever comes down the pipe what you're going to end up hearing is is how this is such a great day in america such a watershed moment and how illegals can vote and those illegals are going to come in and they're going to start making votes based upon their own interests, their own benefits, and they're going to be against black society. They're already doing it now. They're just trying to get that shit on paper. They already have people who vote in this country who don't even have the right to vote, but they can't police it. Now they're trying to put that shit on paper off the strength of our ancestors, off the strength of our suffering. And as soon as that gets done, you're going to stop hearing about MLK's you're going to stop hearing about civil rights. You're going to start hearing about how the immigrants built the country, which you're already hearing now. You're going to start hearing about how this is a land of immigrants, which you're already hearing now. And they slowly start getting that replacement laid out. And these Democrat, I mean, Democoons who are out here all the time caping for other groups and letting other groups leech off of us. This is going to be the end up outcome of everything. Every motherfucking thing. I mean, look at it now. This is supposed to be a rally about America, right? Voter rights and all that. But when you look at the crowd, it's just black folks. It's just black folks. You see a bunch of handlers from other communities there kind of watching over and overseeing it, making sure the real certifiers don't show up. You know, the same way they shift our energy and they'll take us talking about some real grassroots uh, economic power and they'll try to come in and shift it to some other group. They're afraid that we'll show up to their shit and start shifting their energy to some black empowerment. So you'll always see a couple little handlers sprinkled out the crowd. You know what I mean? You'll see a bunch of civil rights dudes. You'll see a bunch of wheelchairs. You'll see a bunch of dinosaurs, a Tyrannosaurus. You'll see that. Black Lives Matter. You'll see that. But then you're going to see a bunch of motherfuckers sprinkled in just to make sure things stay coonish. They don't want it to get certified. They got to keep it real counterfeitish. And that's what you'll see all the time. But outside of that, all you see is black folk. So all you see is black people out there talking about the civil rights era and all these things that black folks need to do. But you don't ever see any of these other groups out there. Never. Go look at the audience. I mean, shit, the cameras was rolling. This is the 2000s. There's cameras on every goddamn corner. You can see for yourself. You see that crowd was all black. But we know those policies aren't going to be all black. Because it's like what it's always been. It's using blackness to provide tangibles for everyone else. And the Jesse Jacksons and Al Sharpens of the world, they're willing participants because that's their job all the way around that's their job we live in an era now where they want to throw out terms like supremacy and they want to throw out terms like tangibles that's just them stealing our shit because they ain't really about none of that they're about shucking and jiving buck dancing and doing whatever the fuck the democratic party tells them to do and on the republican side you got folks like candace owens and them and they're doing their version of it it's the same shit and neither one of these folks represent certified black society neither one of them do 
you got to understand the Democrats and the Republicans. The one thing they have in common is that they all are represented by counterfeit Negroes. You can be a Democrat and wear blue. You can be a Republican and wear red. But at the end of the day, your ass is still a counterfeit facts. But yo, I got to bring this shit all the way back home. Y'all know how I do. I know I took you out in the ocean, but I'm going to bring you all the way back to shore and we're going to wrap this motherfucker up. They hate being in that black alpha spotlight. They hate it. They hate it. They hate it. They hate it. Because anytime they in that black alpha spotlight, we saying shit about them that they know is true. We giving them that real work. We watching them run off the block. We seeing them tucking their tail. And that's what we got to do. We keep putting pressure on them. The first step of being on code is checking anybody who's off code. I don't give a fuck who they are. I don't give a fuck what they're doing. If you got any inappropriate behavior, if you got any conduct detrimental to the future, then we're going to see about you. And when we see about you, you best to be ready. Because one thing about Certified Black Society, we don't give a fuck about your feelings. This is a no feeling zone. They live in a cancer culture era. We live in a tell it how it is era. Get your shit right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And we're going to tell you. We come from the era where we done seen grandmothers and grandfathers be 70, 80 years old and be putting motherfuckers in check. So what you think we going to do? What you think? No, no, no. Feelings? That's the last thing we give a fuck about. And we damn sure don't give a fuck about them from a counterfeit. Because we know the game. We know the hustle. And we stay on ours. For sure. Because this is our era right now. And I guarantee you one thing for sure. You will not see black folks wheelchairs on Washington for the next 60 years. You ain't going to see black folks commemorating the fucking 200 year anniversary of Martin Luther King's speech. We ain't going to be out here how I have a dream in forever. We ain't going to be out here talking about Rosa Parks for the next fucking 209 years. We're not going to be running in place. We're not going to be forgiving massa. We're not going to be shucking and jiving, caping for other groups. We're not going to be sitting here talking about good trouble for the next 500 fucking years. No, new era. We done reset they shit, ran them the fuck off the block. And when I say run them off the block, I'm not talking talking about individually i'm talking about running that ideology of good trouble off the fucking block running wheelchairs on washington off the block running dinosaurs off the block them civil rights negroes to pick up your pants and pay child support ran they ass off the block or should i say we escorted them because i'm not sure they can even walk no more but that's a whole nother motherfucking issue this is a new day a new era and what we're going to be doing is we're going to replace all that wheelchairs on washington shit we're going to replace that with black empowerment out with the motherfucking old and with the new. And only difference is, is that when we come up in here, we gonna change the motherfucking game. And we ain't gonna be asking for a bunch of nothings. We ain't gonna be in here begging, sitting outside of the goddamn building that you just voted for, and then asking the motherfuckers, can you please let us in? Nah, it ain't going down like that. We're going to do it our way with some motherfucking style, with some motherfucking class, and we're going to keep it B-L-A-C-K certified. Guarantee. But yo, bang them notifications, hit that subscribe. Y'all take care of each other out there. Keep on coming. I appreciate all my day ones. Y'all know how we get down over here. Crazy. I'm wild to the motherfucking point. Y'all know me. And the same time, I know y'all because we family and it's in our blood. And bigger than that, it's in our soul. For sure. All the new content is coming and we're going to keep it right. So let's get it. Let's get it. And let's keep it moving. I salute all my brothers, sisters, kings, queens, goddess, and gods. Because black is beautiful and beautiful is black.